Jesus was a human, fathered by a God and born to a virgin. He was dead for three days and resurrected. His death was a sacrifice, an offering or propitiation. It brings favor to humans. He lives now in a realm where other supernatural beings interact with each other and sometimes intervene in human affairs. Gradually, the mainstream of the American public is becoming aware that none of these elements is unique to Christianity. Symbologists or scholars who specialize in understanding ancient symbols tell us that the Orthodox Jesus story, as it appears in our Gospels, follows a specific sacred or mythic template that existed in the ancient Near East long before Christianity or even Judaism. In part, this is due to the flow of history. Religions emerge out of ancestor religions. Though the characters and details merge and morph, elements get carried through that allow us to track the lineage. The Gilgamesh and Noah flood hero stories are similar because the Hebrew story descended from the Sumerian story. The same can be said of the Sumerian descent of Inanna and the Christian resurrection story. Even religions that exist side by side borrow elements from each other, a process scholars call syncretism. But another reason for similarities among religious stories is that all of them are carried by human minds. To quote cognitive scientist Pascal Boyer, evolution by natural selection gave us a particular kind of mind so that only particular kinds of religious notions can be acquired. All human beings can easily acquire a certain range of religious notions and communicate them to others. Our supernatural notions are shaped by the built-in structures that let us acquire, sort, and access information efficiently, especially information about other people. You may have heard the old adage, if dogs had a god, god would be a dog. If horses had a god, god would be a horse. Humans are more inventive than dogs and horses and not all human gods or magical beings have human bodies. They do, however, have human psyches. Minds with quirks and limitations that are peculiar to our species. Philosopher John Locke believed that the human mind was a tabula rasa, a blank slate. We now know this not to be the case. Because we humans need to learn so much so fast, certain assumptions are actually built in. This allows us to generalize from a few bits of data to a big fund of knowledge. It lets us know more than we have actually experienced or been told. Let me illustrate. If I tell you that my guarg, Annie, just made a baby by laying an egg and sitting on it, your brain says, guargs, not just Valerie's guarg, are non-human animals that reproduce by laying eggs. You have different categories in your brain for animal reproductive systems, and putting one guarg in the egg-laying category puts them all there. To oversimplify, we have a built-in filing system. Most of the labels actually start out blank, but some of them don't. The pre-printed labels appear to include human, non-human animal, plant, man-made object, and natural object. A large percentage of our mental architecture is specialized, quote, domain-specific structures for processing information about other humans. We Homo sapiens sapiens are social information specialists. That is our unique niche in this world. Our survival and well-being depend mostly on smarts rather than teeth, claws, stealth, or an innate sense of direction. And most of the information we need comes from other humans. Our greatest threats also come from our own species, people who seek to outcompete, exploit, or kill us. For this reason, our brains are optimized to process information from and about other humans. So how does all of this affect religion? 
Here is a concrete example. Our brains have a specialized facial recognition module. Much of what is known about the inborn structures of our minds comes from the study of infants and brain injuries. And we know about the facial recognition module from both. Shortly after birth, babies are uniquely attracted to two round circles with a slash beneath them. Later on, brain injury or developmental anomalies can produce a disorder in which people cannot recognize faces, including their own, even though other kinds of visual processing are perfectly intact. This is called prosopagnosia. Most of the time, though, our facial recognition module overfunctions rather than underfunctions. In ambiguous situations, looking at clouds, rocks, lumps of clay, or ink blots, we have a tendency to see faces. Our brains automatically activate the facial recognition machinery even though it doesn't really apply. Through history, people have seen gods, demons, ghosts, or the man in the moon looking at them. Christians, whose interpretation of hazy shapes is further shaped by belief in specific supernatural persons, see Jesus, the Virgin Mary, an angel, a demon, or even Satan. This illustrates a broader point that cannot be overemphasized in understanding the psychology of religion. When faced with unknowns and ambiguities, our brains activate inborn information modules even when they don't really apply. We take unfamiliar situations and even random data and perceive simulacra, meaning patterns that are inherent not in the external world, but in our own minds. Furthermore, our pattern recognition systems err on the side of being overactive rather than underactive. This is called apophenia. 